Okay. This is, where am I? Lecture eight on Vesper, and it's probably going to be all one lecture. And I'm going to start with the video. It's on the slide and let the video introduce it to you. And then I'll pick up from there. So this is on the slideshow. I have closed caption turned on. However, you can go to the slideshow, the slides, lecture slides, and find this link and click on it and remove closed caption if it gets in your way. But I have to have it on for this. Okay. Stop a few balloons. Come on, go back to the beginning. There we go. Right. Let's try again. Valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. Let's begin. Have you seen a balloon vendor at his art? He blows up a few balloons, ties them together gives a twist yeah. here and a twist there, and a beautiful shape emerges. Similarly, nature's building blocks, the atoms, combine chemically in a variety of permutations to form molecules with diverse shapes. The three-dimensional arrangement of atoms in a molecule is referred to as its molecular geometry. Many properties of a substance can be attributed to its molecular geometry. Can the molecular geometry of a molecule be predicted? Yes, the molecular geometry of a molecule can be predicted with the help of the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory or VSEPR theory. What is valence shell electron pair repulsion theory? How does it help to predict the shapes of molecules? Come, let's learn about the VSEPR theory in this module. What you will learn. At the end of this module, you will be able to Describe the concept of the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. Apply the VSEPR theory to predict the shapes of molecules. VSEPR theory, predicting the shapes of molecules. Electrons are the negatively charged particles of an atom. Electrons that can take part in chemical bonding are known as valence electrons. These are found in valence shells, which are the outermost shells from atoms. A chemical bond involves either the transfer or sharing of valence electrons between atoms. Sharing of valence electrons between atoms in a molecule can be represented by Lewis dot structures. Broke a chair. A Lewis structure or Lewis dot diagram is a type of shorthand notation which depicts the distribution of valence electrons in molecules. It shows the number of valence electron pairs in each individual atom, including the bonding electron pairs and the non-bonding electron pairs, also known as known pairs, that may exist in the molecule. Sharing of electrons between atoms gives rise to covalent compounds. Molecules of covalent compounds come in many shapes and sizes. The shape of a molecule can be predicted using the valence shell electron pair repulsion VSEPR theory. The VSEPR theory assumes that the arrangement of valence electron pairs around the central atom in a molecule determines its molecular geometry, that is the molecular shape. How do we use the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory to predict the shapes of molecules? To understand this, let us first consider the assumptions made by the VSEPR theory. One, valence electron pairs in an atom repel each other. Two, valence shell electron pairs, therefore, arrange themselves around the central atom in such a way that there is minimum repulsion between them. This happens when they are as far apart as possible. For example, if there are two electron pairs or electron groups, then these adopt the configuration where the electron pairs are at an angle of 180 degrees, as in beryllium hydride and carbon dioxide. Three, it is this 
definite arrangement of electron pairs that gives the molecule its distinct shape and geometry. In other words, molecular geometry depends on the electron pair geometry. 4. A non-bonding electron pair or lone pair exerts greater repulsion than a bonded pair. So, lone pair lone pair repulsion is greater than lone pair bonded pair repulsion, which is greater than bonded pair bonded pair repulsion. 5. For the purpose of determining electron geometry, the two pairs of electrons of a double bond and the three pairs of a triple bond are treated as one pair. Let's take a look at the possible geometrical shapes that arise when there are different numbers of bonding and non-bonding pairs of electrons surrounding an atom. When there are two electron pairs, the possible molecular geometry is linear. When there are three electron pairs, the possible molecular geometries are trigonal, planar, or bent. When there are four electron pairs, the possible molecular geometries are tetrahedral, trigonal, pyramidal, or bent. When there are five electron pairs, the possible molecular geometries are trigonal, bipyramidal, seesaw, T-shaped, or linear. When there are six electron pairs, the possible molecular geometries are octahedral, square pyramidal, or square planar. Shown here is a chart which depicts the possible VSEPR molecular geometries. Take a look at it again. VSEPR strategy. Let us now use the VSEPR strategy to predict the shape of a water molecule. First, Draw the Lewis structure of the water molecule. Count the total number of electron pairs around the central atom oxygen in the molecule. Determine the number of bonding electron pairs and non-bonding electron pairs or lone pairs. A water molecule has two bonding and two non-bonding electron pairs surrounding the central atom, making a total of four electron pairs. The most stable spatial arrangement of the valence electrons is one in which the mutual repulsions are minimum. Remember that if there are four electron pairs around the central atom, the electron pairs experience least repulsion when the arrangement is tetrahedral. So, arrange the four electron pairs around the oxygen atom in a tetrahedral configuration. However, this is not the final structure as the electron pairs are not similar. The effect of the lone pairs has to be brought into the picture. The presence of the lone pairs distorts the shape. The lone pairs exert greater repulsion on the bonded pairs, resulting in the bonded pairs being pushed closer to each other. Determine the molecular geometry. To do this, only the atoms need to be considered. So ignore the lone pairs and look only at the arrangement of the atoms. We observe that the atoms are arranged in a bent or V-shape. Alternatively, once the numbers of bonded and lone pairs have been determined from the Lewis structure, the shape is identified using the VSEPR molecular geometry table. Okay, so now, there you go. You're all experts, right? Back to the slides. And back to the beginning. But I like that video. So that is in the, in the lecture slides. There are three videos I showed one at uh, my earlier lecture, and I do recommend all three of them. But that gives a really good overview of what we're doing here with Vesper is we are looking at the shape. We're actually getting a three-dimensional shape, whereas Lewis structure does not give you shape. It shows you the connections, what's connected to what, and where your valence electrons are. So remember, if you don't have valence electrons in your Lewis is not correct. 
the bonds count as valence electrons, but you have to make sure you put the unshared pairs there as well. So we then use that to get to Vesper. And Vesper, you do need to know what this stands for because it explains what's going on. It's the valence shells, electron pair repulsion theory. It's the repulsion of the electron pairs. Notice we're not talking about single electrons here, we're talking about the pairs, either unshared or in bonds, and the repulsion. It's the repulsion from the unshared. They take up a lot more space and they will push the other electrons that are away, particularly ones in bonds, because of their repulsion. The point of all of these shapes is to keep the electron group as far away from each other as possible. An electron group, and this is different from Lewis, so be careful not to get them confused. An electron group is a pair of electrons, so it's either a connection to an atom, and that was easy to remember as one, or a lone pair. So a lone pair, an unshared pair, counts as one electron group. And yes, it can be a single electron, but we're not going to work with that here. So be sure you understand that the elect unshared pair, the pair is one electron group. We care about the spacing. What this is dealing with is what space is occupied by the electron pairs. So that's why it counts as one, because it's one unit that's taking up the space and how are they oriented. So this is, you start with an electron group arrangement. And there are five electron group arrangements. And from here you go to the shape. So make sure you understand that terminology. So if you are asked on a test, what is the electron group arrangement of something, you understand that's not the molecular shape. Molecular shape comes from this starting point, and then you look at the effect of any unshared pairs of electrons in there. So you start with this, you go to the shape. The electron group arrangements are geometric shapes. They have specific names, you have linear, and they are the specific shapes that, that orient with or correspond with the farthest spacing that these electron groups, these connections can have. So if you have two electron groups, and that would have to be two atoms bonded to a central atom, they're 180 degrees apart. They're completely as far apart as possible. Then you have three is trigonal planar, so it's, it's like a spinner. It's planar, all right? It has no depth, it's strictly in plane, and then it's three points on a plane. The tetrahedral is kind of like a pup tent, if any of you know what that is, or a tent, but all four angles are identical, 109.5. Trigonal bipyramidal, we won't do much of that this semester, but you will next semester. You have basically, it's the trigonal planar with an, like a tent on either end. So you have a triangle base and then a point above and a point below. And the octahedral, you have six equally spaced positions around and at top and bottom. So this is a very critical slide because it pretty much summarizes everything I want you to know in terminology. And I do want you to know the AXE. I think it's critical for a starting point and understanding how you get from Lewis structure to shape. So what is AXE? A is just A, you don't change it. It, de it represents the central atom. We do an AXE designation for each central atom. So if you have a multi, centered molecule, you will take each atom individually. So let's just go through how we do it initially and then go from there. So, okay. I kept these slides in because they are good images and good representations of the shapes. 
So, um, you know, I recognize, recommend you look at these because I like the way they're drawn, but I'm actually going to go to the ones from our textbook. This is from the previous one. But these are, these are good reference slides. And the same here. So those are reference slides. I'm just going to go through them one at a time. The bond angle, well, I won't ask you the exact bond angle. You should know the effect of, for example, an unshared pair is going to push these down. So this bond angle will be smaller than if this weren't here. So you should know what happens to the bond angles if they're, if they're getting smaller and why, which is the whole theory of this group. Okay. And double bonds also take up more space. There are four electrons here, not two, and so they're going to take up more space. And so they're gonna push this down as well. But not as much as the lone pair. It's the unshared pair of electrons. That takes up a lot of space. All right, so this is from the book, and this is the, the, the terminology we use is the AXE. And this is using the tetrahedral as an example. So I'll go to the whiteboard and work through a couple. Still don't my black. A, X, E, A is just the, it stays as A. You don't change that. So you call A, and it represents the central atom. X is the number of bonded atoms. What's connected to it? So if I have, you know, C, H2, Cl2, to answer this, you have to do a Lewis structure. And E is the number of unshared pairs, but it's pairs. So if you have two electrons together, that's one pair, so the E would be one. So for example, CH2Cl2, you have to do the Lewis structure. You we go from Lewis structure to Vesper. You really can't do it the other way. So my Lewis structure would be like this. I have one central atom, the carbon. So I will have one AXE for this molecule. So the carbon is just A. You keep it as A. X is the number of bonded atoms to the carbon. It has four atoms connected to it. E is the number of unshared pairs. There are none, it's completely bonds. So that's it, there's no E. And so our electron group number is four. This corresponds to the tetrahedral electron group arrangement. From there, we get the shape. And that will go back to those slides. But right now, we'll just say that this is how you get the AX4. What if I had Okay, what if I had water? Water is H2O. It's O, H, Lewis structure. We don't care about the shape. We just want to know what's connected to what and where, where our valence electrons are, our unshared pairs. Okay, my AXE for this one is A. We just say A. X is the number of connections. We only have one central atom, that's oxygen. So this is for the oxygen. I have two connecting atoms. E is the unshared pairs. I have two pairs. All right, so it's this pair and this pair. So it's two. It's not four. So my electron group number is four. 
So this is also the tetrahedral electron group arrangement. The tetra is always electron group number four. There are four electron groups around your central atom. This is my central atom. That's one, two, three, four electron groups. So AX2, E2, the electron group arrangement is four and that is tetrahedral. From there, we go to the shape. And just like in that video it explained, these unshared pairs push the surrounding electrons away, particularly in the bonds. And so they are gonna push those down. This is not going to be linear because this is not up on top and bottom without an oxygen. It's Mickey Mouse ears, it's at an angle. And so therefore, my Vesper is bent or V-shaped. And you have to show the bend. You do not have to show the unshared pair. That's up to you. I don't show it. I want the molecular shape. And ideally, we would actually draw it a little more perfectly symmetrical. Right, can I do that? So it's bent or V-shaped. This is the shape. The electron group arrangement is tetra, tetrahedral, the electron, sh the molecular shape. If you're actually holding the molecule in your hand, what is the shape of that? It's bent or V-shaped. Okay, go back to the slides. So here's your electron group arrangement for, with four electron groups. My CH2Cl2 is the tetrahedral shape. It's the tetrahedral electron group arrangement, but also this case is the shape. It can be both. And see there's AX4. AX2E2 is the bent or the V-shaped because this is pushing those two connections there. The AX3E, is, ammonia is an example of that, is trigonal pyramidal. Okay, so let's go back to the whiteboard and draw these. And I'll show you, we'll do ammonia. So all of those are the electron group arrangement of four of tetrahedral, but they all have different molecular shapes. So this is tetrahedral molecular shape. This is bent or V-shaped, but they are all of the electron group number four, which is the tetrahedral electron group arrangement. And if I do ammonia, which is NH3, my Lewis structure for ammonia is this. My AXE, you start with this A, that just represents it. X is the number of attachments. It has three atoms attached. E is the number of unshared pairs. You have one pair. We don't put the one down there. So you just say AX3E. Okay, so it's AX3E. It is still electron group number of four, three plus one. You add those together. That is tetrahedral. It is always tetrahedral. So these are three tetrahedral representations because their, their group number is four. You get that from the AXE, but their shapes are different. So I'll just have to, no way around it. So the first shape, now I'm going to the shape. Tetrahedral is also a shape. It's when you don't have any unshared pairs in there. So the electron group arrangement is the shape. Carbon is your center. Put your first hydrogen straight out. Now this was CH2, Cl2. Because all four of these atoms are around the carbon, it doesn't matter which one's around which because it's all single bonds. Your second atom 
comes off at an angle. This is not a 90 degree angle, it's larger. It's 109.5. .109 so do not give me this. That's not correct. For the tetrahedral, and this is specifically for the tetrahedral, okay? Come off a little bit of an angle. Now put your wedge down here. It's kind of, it's kind of space, kind of similar, not exactly. Wedge means it's coming out at you. So the straight line means it's in the plane of the paper or the board or whatever. Because you're now doing a 3D representation. A wedge, the skinny end is at the center atom, get fat as it goes around towards you. It's coming out at you. And then we do a dotted line to show the one behind. This space should be fairly close because it's a spatial representation. Some of you are probably, I'm sure, very good artists and you will probably draw very beautiful molecules. I'm not. And for those of you who are like me or not, make sure you just follow the rules. This is a smaller angle. This is larger than 90 degrees. Because it's 109.5. And that your, dot, your dashes are not like this, okay? It's not a dotted line. They're side dashes. That's showing going behind the paper or the board. The wedge shows coming out at you. Very, very important that you get those correct. That's the tetrahedral molecular shape. It's also the group arrangement. All right, what about the V-shape? Well, V-shape is easy or bent. Both are correct because you just draw it with an angle. You do not have to draw the unshared pairs. You can if you want. I don't. The third is trigonal. And make sure it's, don't just say trig, trigonal by par uh, pyramidal. All three of these are tetrahedral electron group arrangements, but they all have different shapes. You're holding it in your hand. The shape is going to be different, pretending it's huge. And this was our nitrogen. It had the electron pair up here, and that's pushing these all down like you know, a, a, a three-legged table or an upside down broken umbrella is what I think of it as. So just make sure that your angles are down. Don't give me this, which I call a squash spider. Okay. All three of them must be down pointed in the same direction because your electrons are here and they're pushing them that way and then one coming towards me. So don't give me that. No squash spiders. So all three of these are the tetrahedral electron group arrangement, but they all have three different molecular shapes, which is why it's important to know the difference in the language. All right, let's go back to slides. So if, when you only have single bonds and you have one central atom, so this example is the carbon, two chlorines, two fluorines. My whiteboard example was, well, it was supposed to be with two chlorines. I just realized I did it with uh, all hydrogens. Oh, well, the angles will be the same. It doesn't matter in this specific example of a tetrahedral arrangement or molecule, molecular shape, what order you put the four atoms in. Because if you were holding, looking at a model and doing it, you would see that when you turn it, there's no, there is no fixed arrangement. It doesn't matter how you put them in the Lewis structure. And actually, 
in the Vesper if it's just the tetrahedral and there are no, no, no double bonds there. All right, this is the video I just showed. There are two others and I highly recommend them. This is from the book. I like this slide because it summarizes the whole thing. What are you doing? I wanted to play the video again. It summarizes the whole thing in a really nice, easy to read manner, I think. Here is your electron group arrangement. There's your group number, electron group number. When I added up my X and my E of my AXE, I get a two, a three, a four. And that tells me the electron group arrangement, if it's three, is trigonal planar. If it's four, it's tetrahedral. This is your starting place. So what do you do? You get your Lewis structure first, always. Get your AXE designation. Figure out the electron group arrangement, which is here. And then you, and then you figure out the shape. Now, if you have your AXE, you could just come down here and look at it. But there's no reason to memorize it. Because remember, in chemistry, there's not a lot of memorization. It's understanding. So if you understand what that electron unshared pair is doing, you are going to recognize, oh, it's pushing these down. It's going to be V-shaped. It's pushing these down. And then you have to memorize the names. But again, as you do it, more and more, it's, it's going to stick in your head. Make sure you don't get trigonal planar and trigonal pyramidal confused. Think about what the words mean. Pyramidal means a pyramid. It's a pyramid shape with a triangle base. Planar is exactly that. It's a plane. It's a spinner. It's flat. If you hold it on the side, there's no depth to it. So pay attention to your words. This talks about the number of bonding groups. And then there's your, there are your angles. Because I think Alex asked you about angles. So you can refer to these. And this is the next set. Be familiar with them and how to get these. But we're really not going to do very much on that until Chem 1. So, but be familiar with them because it is part of it. So here is... Um, the second video I played in the earlier lecture, and then here's a third one I recommend. So, so this again goes into drawing. Here's a much prettier picture than what I did. Now, your dotted line doesn't have to be wedged. It can be difficult if you, if you're able to go for it, but make sure your, your front wedge is angled. The skinny end towards the molecule, the fat end coming out at you, this perspective. And that your lines are hashtags. They are not dotted lines. And this is a, not a 90 degree angle. This is wider. So make sure you draw it slightly off center. So for AX2, Well, actually, for this specific example, you have to go to Lewis. But if we just go through these for a minute, AX2 is right here. It's linear. There's an A in the middle and an X on either side, two Xs. And so that's linear. AX2E. First of all, you have three, two plus one, so it has to be the trigonal planar electron group arrangement, but it has an E, which means it has an unshared pair bending these down. So it's the bent or the V-shaped. AX3, that's three. So it's going to be the electron group arrangement of three, which is trigonal planar. And in fact, the shape is also trigonal planar because there's nothing in there that's altering the shape. There's no unshared pairs. AX3E, you have a three plus a one, so that's four. Electron group arrangement of four, which is tetrahedral. AX3E is trigonal bipyramidal, that's your ammonia. This is pushing this down, these three down into your three-legged table or 
upside down broken umbrella. And then AX2E2, again, that's four, two plus two. So that is the tetrahedral electron group arrangement. But AX2E2, it is also V-shaped or bent. So V-shaped, you have here and here. It's the end result. It's the actual shape. So let's look at this nitrate ion. You have you have to start with the valence and the and the Lewis structure. So valence electrons, nitrogen is five, oxygen is six, and I always have to look oxygen up for some reason. And I have three of them. And I have I have a negative charge here, so I have an electron. So that's going to be 24 electrons. Lewis structure, I don't care about shape. I just want to see what's connected with what. If I do my um, Mortimer, I don't remember if this works with ions or not. Yeah, OK. It says I have four bonds. If I have four bonds, then I have to make one of these a double bond. And if I do that, put my other valence electrons around. Let's see if my count comes out correctly. 24, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. Yes. Now, because this is an ion, remember, you have to put it in brackets with a negative charge outside of it. Oh, there's my black. All ions have to be in brackets with a negative, well, well, whatever the charge is outside of it. If you don't do that correctly, then your Lewis structure is wrong. Okay. So let's look at the AXE. That's the next step. I only have one central atom. So I'm going to be talking about the shape around the nitrogen. So what's my X? It's one, two, three. What's my E? I have no E. I have no unshared electron pairs there. So I only have AX3. That is my electron group arrangement. It's trigonal planar. It looks like a spinner. And the shape is also, as a matter of fact, trigonal planar. There's nothing in here to push anything out of the way. This double bond will make these guys move in slightly. So your actual shape these will be slightly pushed in like a Y but that would be your shape. When you have a double bond or triple bond you must put it in your Vesper. You don't have to put your unshared pairs in, but you must put your double bonds or your triple bonds in. This would not be correct if I drew it like this. That is wrong. All right? If you have a multiple bond, it has got to be part of the structure because it's an, a very important part of the chemistry of that molecule. So keep your multiple bonds. It's part of the shape. So CS2, we'll slow, we're going to work that one out, and H2S. Whoops, might help if I share the whiteboard. So 
So C S2, right? Isn't that what it said? Where to go, where to go, where to go. Yes, okay. So first, number of valence electrons, carbon has four, and sulfur is six. Does not have any charges on it, so it's just this. So six times two is 12, plus four is 16 valence electrons. Okay, that's my ideal. I have three total regular atoms. They each need eight electrons to complete their shells. And so that's 24 valence electrons, ideally. We only have 16. So how many have to be shared? You would have eight valence electrons that are shared. How many bonds is that? Four bonds. Well, this just made my structure really easy. The carbon is the less electronegative one. So it has to go over here. So the sulfur has to go on either side. I have four bonds. It's going to be like that. Now, finish your octet for your sulfur. Do I have everything accounted for? One carbon, two sulfurs. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. 16 valence electrons, yes. So by doing this, I knew right away what the structure had to be. Four bonds. And that's linear. Your AXE, your A, carbon is the only central. X is two, there's no E. Carbon has no E. You do not count these E's because what we, all we care about is the central atom. We're getting the shape around the central atom. So it's linear. And the other one was H2S. Now that looks really similar to CS2, doesn't it? We're going to have two valence electrons for that one plus six, we have eight. If this were ideal, we would have eight for sulfur plus two times two is four. We would have 12 minus eight is four. Well, that says I only have two bonds, okay? That makes sense because I have a hydrogen, we can only be one bond. And I have to finish my octet rule for my sulfur. So two, four, six, eight. All right, that was easy. What's the shape though? Sulfur is an A. The X is two, there are two connections. But unlike the carbon, which had no E's, this has two E's. So this actually is the electron group number of four. Carbon was two, the, the previous example was two, which is tetrahedral. And if you look up on the slide, AX2E2, or you can just remember because of these two electron pairs that are repulse, gonna be doing you know, repulsion, it is going to bend those connections down and it's bent or V-shaped. So these make all the difference in the world. Your carbon didn't have them, had double bonds. It was linear. Because of these the E's, these unshared electron pairs, it's bent. Okay, so that's the end of this. I am going to do a short piece on a separate lecture about multi-center molecules and how you do the shapes of that because that's part of your lab exercise. So this is the end of lecture eight, part one, and there will be a very small part two with it.